Good evening, everybody. Yeah. 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 Right, she said my name is Awful yeah. and I'm actually um, a college student. This yes. is my second year in college. I'm a sophomore. And um, I'm so grateful, you know, that y'all are having me here today. Um, I was invited by our lovely auntie, Katrina. And I'm, I'm very glad I'm here tonight. Um, now, uh, we're going to start off with a little prayer, and then I'm going to go into, into God's word. Um, okay. Let's all, let's, let us all close our eyes. Okay. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you glory for being us here this evening. We thank you for this privilege to be in your presence. Father God, I pray that as I um, speak unto these people that I'll be able to speak through your Holy Spirit that you've gifted us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, I want to ask a quick question. Well, I will say this. Um, we're all Christians here. Okay? We've all accepted Christ. We all, I believe, have kind hearts. So let's say I were to give you something. I know all of you, like, if I were to, let's say, give you money or something. And somebody else, need, if you had money and somebody else needed money, you know, y'all would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can lend you some. Or you'd be kind and say, okay, I can get this for you and stuff, you know. All of us have kind hearts. Who would do that, right? Yeah. Well, um, answer this question for me. How come we have received Christ? Us Christians have received Christ, but it's so hard for us to share with other people. You know, having Christ in us is something good. It is great. It's like the greatest thing to have. Having Christ in our hearts is the greatest thing to have. How come we have uh, Christ in our hearts, but we're so stingy about it? We're so That's greedy right. about right. having Christ in our hearts. Right. Okay, we have Christ, but when it comes to other people, we are excuses. Oh, I'm too scared. Oh, what are they going to think of me? You know, they have this like, like she was saying, you know, we've been labeled, oh, we're the super Christians and stuff. So then we take that into consideration and think, oh, if I tell this person about Christ, you're going to be like, you're a super Christian. You're too good for me. I'm not going to listen to you. We have this mindset in our heads. And that shouldn't be. As Christians, we've been sent to go out into the world and to spread the word of God. We're not supposed to be gritty or stingy. We're supposed to share that with other people. Now, in order to share that, um, I learned this literally like um, my last uh, last semester or two semesters ago. I learned that you can't just go out into the world and tell them a story about Christ. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. I I don't know. I learned this the hard way. I didn't know this. I'm just like, okay. Somebody tells me, go preach the gospel. I'll be like, well, the gospel is the good news that Jesus died for us and rose up again, and now we're saved. And, you know, I'm thinking, that's going to make a difference. I mean, uh, I've read it in the Bible, and I'm just going to say, that's not how it works. For us to be able to reach that person, for us to be able to touch that person's heart, it has to come from God. And for um, us to speak out to that person, it has to be the Holy Spirit. God gifted us with that Holy Spirit when Christ came to die for us. He was there when Christ died for us. The Holy Spirit has been there since the beginning. And God gifted us with the Holy Spirit when Christ died. So, as Christians, we have Christ in our hearts, and we have to use Christ in our hearts. Amen. So we can't just go out into the world and think, we're just going to speak whatever's on our minds, and it's going to work. It's not going to work that way. We have to speak through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I'm going to share a story with you. This um, this spring, actually, our pastor was talking to us about a trip to Panama City Beach to, you know... Um, when he said that, literally, I zoned out for the rest of the um, sermon. I said... I don't want to reach. What? Turn up. I got excited. I was like, yes. Oh my gosh. To the beach? Yes. So I got excited. And um, at first I couldn't afford it, but then I was able to afford it. So I got excited. I didn't pay attention to the rest of the stuff he said. So I'm making all these plans. Oh, I need this outfit. I need to get this outfit. I need to get this and that and that. You know? And then, you know, before we left, of course, we had a meeting about it. And he told us, okay, now we're there to preach the gospel. Because, you know, there are going to be a lot of spring breakers. Most of them are not saved. Or they may be saved, but are lost. So, therefore, we as Christians, the saved ones, we're going to go out there and preach the gospel unto people. Now, you know, when he said that in my head, I was like, okay, that's not so bad, I guess. You know, it's not so bad. It's not going to be that bad. So, and then he said, okay, now, we are going to do a little test to see how good y'all are. And then he called out, like, a couple of people. Me being a smart one, I was just like, I got this, yes, me. Call on me, call on me. And he called on me. This was a lesson. Okay, for me. 
He called on me, and you know, we pretended we were on the bus. The idea was, when we go to Panama City, we'll get vans and give people free rides, and through that, we'll share the gospel. So, um, he pretended there was a van, you know, he put chairs, arranged chairs, and you know, me being, thinking I'm the smart one, you know, I ran up to the front seat, I said, Psh, got this, sit down, you know? And then he pretended to have um, people who have been on the trip before, he pretended to have some of them come up and pretend to be spring breakers, and then they, one of them stopped by me, so I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, I got this, I got this. And I looked at him, I said, <clears throat> well, what's your name? <laughs> he was like, my name's Joe. And I was like, okay, that's good. Where'd you come from? He told me where he comes from and all that. And I was like, so, you go to church? And he was like, yep. And I was like, that's good. <laughs> so, you like Jesus? And he was like, yep, I love Jesus. And I was like, that's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> You love Jesus. I love Jesus too. I love Jesus. I was like, that's good. And then I was stuck. And I was just like, oh, this is much harder than I thought. I was like, I, what am I supposed to say? You know, anybody can claim they love Jesus. Anybody can claim they go to church. You know, just because you go to church does not make you a Christian. Just like a car, and uh, something in the garage does not make a car. So I'm sitting there, I'm just like, oh, Lord Jesus, okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say? And you know, we're in, a, in front of a bunch of college students, and I'm frozen, and I want to cry. <laughs> I'm so emotional. I'm just like, okay, okay, pull yourself together. What am I supposed to say? So at the end of this testing, um, our pastor told us, okay, when you go out there, you're not just supposed to speak. You're supposed to ask the Holy Spirit to help you speak to these people. So I was just like, oh. Oh, really? Oh, well, I didn't know that. Okay. Um, I guess I'll keep that in mind. So, um, I want us to open to, uh, um, Matthew 5, 13. John 16, 13. And here it says, um, when the spirit of the truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will he will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring the glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So the Spirit gets commands from God. So whatever God speaks through the Spirit is what the Spirit speaks through us. So obviously whatever comes from God is the truth. So as humans, we shouldn't think... Um, What's in our minds is what's true. Anything, a lot of things pollute our minds. TV, the media, um, you know. Cell phone. Exactly. Our problems, our own problems pollute our minds. We get filled with so many things. What we need to be filled with is with the Holy Spirit that we've been gifted with. You know, to preach unto other people, to preach the truth unto other people, for them to receive Christ. But we depend so much on our own understanding. We need to depend on God's understanding, the Holy Spirit's understanding. So, um, we went to Panama, to continue the story, we went to Panama City, and I was a nervous wreck. We got in the car, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to say? Oh my gosh. So, um, the first person came, you know, they stopped by me, and I, I'm telling you, y'all, you know, my eyes were wide, I already have big eyes, so I'm pretty sure I scared the person next to me, I was like, I was just looking at them, I was like, hey, what's your name? And you know, I started that whole routine and then I paused for a second. I was like, I remembered my pastor said we have to pray. You know, make sure that we're filled with the Holy Spirit so we don't just tell them stories. Because you can tell them, you can read the Bible and tell all kinds of stories from the Bible. That, this is how a lot of people get lost. You know, they read the Bible, they just read this book, but they don't commune with God. You're supposed to fellowship with God when you read the Bible. So I'm sitting there, I'm just like, okay, I'm supposed to pray. So I prayed, oh my Lord, when I tell you I've never prayed like this before, I was praying my heart out. I said, Jesus, Lord, let the Holy Spirit speak through me tonight. Please. And you know, when it came to it, it wasn't so bad. You know, I was talking to them, and as I was talking to other people were praying for me. And you know, I'm talking to the person, and you know, sharing the gospel with them. Whether or not they receive Christ, I'm not, I'm not sure. That's up to God. God is the one who changes hearts, but my job is just to speak the truth onto them. So, um, that's one thing I realized. The Holy Spirit is very important. I feel like a lot of us, um, a lot of Christians overlook the Holy Spirit. You know, and go through life with your own understanding. We need to know that the Holy Spirit is very 
crucial. He is very important. It says in the Bible here. It says here, it's um, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So through the Holy Spirit, are we going to be able to preach unto others to the ends of the earth? Don't think your own understanding is going to get you anywhere. You can say anything. I could say, oh, uh, uh, Jesus loves you. Okay, the person is going to be like, yeah, I know that. But if it's not the Holy Spirit speaking through you, I mean, when the Holy Spirit speaks through you, it's going to touch that person. Even if it's not then, five years from now, it could happen. Ten years from now, it could happen. That is the work of God, not ours. So, through the Holy Spirit, are we, are we able to share the gospel with people? Are we able to speak the truth? Us humans, we can cook up anything in our heads and say it. And it's not going to be the truth. It's through God. That we're able to, it's through the Holy Spirit that we're able, to, we're able to speak the truth unto others. So we need to keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is very crucial. He's very important in our lives. We need to pay attention to Him and what He says when we're reading the Bible. We need to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to grant us understanding. We can't do, I can't just, I can just read the Bible and read it literal and then go out into the world and not know what the heck to say to people. When you read the Bible, you pray that Holy Spirit, please give me understanding so I can understand your words, so I can preach the truth unto other people. Because I could easily deceive others. Because I myself don't know what I'm doing. I can easily deceive everybody around me. So we need to pray. We need to, um, every time we read our Bibles, pray that the Holy Spirit grants you understanding. When you speak to others about Christ, pray that the Holy Spirit gives you the truth to speak unto others. Don't go make up something in your head and go sit there. By the way, um, Jesus died for us. He uh, he traveled somewhere. And by the way, uh, he died and then he ascended up. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That's the gospel right there. Don't don't cook up stuff in your head. Pray that the Holy Spirit will speak through you to others. So um, at the end, um, I was able to um, talk to people and speak to people about Christ. I'm not sure if they got saved. And I mean, there were a lot of people that were saved. But I'm not sure if um, anybody was saved with me speaking to them. But you know, that's up to God. That was I left that up to God. But my my job was to talk to people and speak to people, and that's what we're supposed to do. That was our assignment. It says right here, we're we're supposed to tell people everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And um, yeah, this is my message for tonight. We need to keep the Holy Spirit in mind. Amen. Thank you for having me.